Hello and welcome back to Shakespeare. We are working on the sonnets and today we've got sonnet 100. Huzzah! And sonnet 100 says, Where art thou, muse, that thou forget so long to speak of that which gives thee all thy might? Spendst thou thy fury on some worthless song, darkening thy power to lend base subjects light? Return, forgetful muse, and straight redeem in gentle numbers time so idly spent. Sing to the ear that doth thy lays esteem, and gives thy pen both skill and argument. Rise, resty muse, my love's sweet face survey. If time have any wrinkle graven there, if any, be a satire to decay, and make time's spoils despised everywhere. Give my love fame faster than time wastes life, so thou prevents his scythe and crooked knife. So this is an interesting one. This is one that, at least in my interpretation, isn't directly to the fair youth, which is also interesting because he's addressing his muse. Uh, the speaker or Shakespeare is addressing his muse. And I believe in previous sonnets, he had referenced the fair youth as being his muse. And to my understanding, muses were people or gods or mythical creatures or whatever that would inspire creativity in people. I think traditionally there were nine muses and they were all female, which is why some of the earlier fair youth sonnets are interesting because he seemed to be calling the fair youth his muse, making this male character a, a female muse. So there was like some weirdness there, some some interesting tidbits there. But in, in this particular sonnet, he seems to have removed his muse, the source of inspiration, from the fair youth. And as if he's talking to his fair to his muse saying, you know, like, please, I'm inspired over here, but I can't actually do my writing until you come back to me and give me the right words to say, if that makes any sense. So it, to me, this one anyway, feels like a split between we've got the, the listener, the fair youth, the subject, the object of desire over here, and we've got the muse over there instead of them being one and the same. But what the speaker or Shakespeare is saying is he's been without his muse, for a while and hasn't been able to write and he's frustrated by that so it's like he's suffering for, from some writer's block here and he's like why haven't i been inspired for a while is my muse off somewhere else inspiring really bad art <laughs> and he's like you know come, come back to me because i actually appreciate you and you inspire me to create beautiful things so please 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 come back and show me my love's face but please don't let there be any wrinkles on my love's face. I don't want to see that my love has aged at all, or if there are wrinkles, they need to be like, you know, making fun of the fact that people actually do age, or if there are wrinkles on my love's face, then that has to make everybody hate time for aging my love's face. And the last two lines, in some of the analyses that I read, some thought that the last two lines were actually pointed towards the fair youth that give my love fame faster than time wastes life so thou prevents his scythe and crooked knife to me that doesn't feel like it's to the listener it doesn't feel like it's to the fair youth it feels like a like almost like a silent little internal prayer of like please make this be a thing come back to me my fair muse or come back to me my muse so i can write about the fair youth and immortalize him before it's too late, sort of thing. So that's Sonnet 100, at least the way that I see it. I'd be curious to see what you think. You're always welcome to leave a comment. You can also, you know, subscribe, get the notifications, tell your friends about the channel, all that sort of fun stuff if you're, if you're so inspired. Speaking of inspiration. Anyway, I'll see you tomorrow for Sonnet 101. Mwah.